All right. Hi, everyone. Here we are uh, with Neil Schwartz, the president of SBRnet. Uh, really happy to have him here with us. And he's going to give us some insight in how to adequately and properly use the, the data sets uh, that he has, really the gold standard uh, of this industry. So really excited to have him here and to have this conversation. Hopefully, by the time that we're done here in this conversation, you have a good grasp of this data set, how it was actually created, and how you can use it to best uh, inform your marketing plans. Neil, thank you so much for joining us and for this time. Dr. Mal, it's a pleasure. Happy New Year. Um, it's always great to be in one of your classes. Um, you know, look, you're one of our more enthusiastic uh, and new users, I might add. But, you know, we really appreciate that you have embraced, you know, the whole data-driven process, because really that's what SBRnet and I'm all about. It's sure. all about bringing data, you know, into the various process, whether it's a strategic marketing question, whether it's a, um, a management question, whether it's, you know, really any question, anything mm -hmm. to do with the business of sports, data somehow fits in there um, into the process. And what I'm hoping to get, um, you know, from today is that the students will have a better understanding of where data fits in, but more important, how can they go to SBRnet, get the data they need in order to be able to generate insights, take those insights, create a story, and then tell a story and get an A in your class. That's right. That's the hope, right? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm I'm here to help. I'm here to yeah. get. I'm here for everybody to get A's and make your job easier and make the students' job easier. So, what I'd like to do is I'm going to try to divide the session into three separate areas. Number one is that I'm going to show a PowerPoint, talks a little bit about our data, and also you'll see our site up on the screen at the same time. Don't get overly distracted. Stay on the PowerPoint in the beginning. But we're going to use the site also kind of interchangeably. And then we're going to turn the whole thing around and we're going to get all data data driven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really kind of divide this session up into three. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to share my screen. And hopefully, uh, not hopefully, I know everybody can see my screen, which is good. Mm -hmm. And so as you can see, the company is called SBRnet, stands for Sports Business Research Network. I am the president of SBRnet. Um, and just to let you know, I'm not just some guy they pulled off the street to, to kind of do this. I have over 26 years of marketing research experience specific to the sports business. Really, when it comes to the sports business, <clears throat> you'd probably be hard pressed to find anybody that has, you know, done as much as I have within the sports business. So before I get into a number of things, I just wanted to let you know we are a leading provider of sports data for you to do analytics, research, all the things that Dr. Mal is going to ask you to do during this school term. We provide data across a wide variety of areas, including participation data. We have equipment, footwear, and apparel data. But what we're most noted for is our sports fan data. And that's, in fact, data that we actually make ourselves. Our annual study of sports fans, which covers 19 sports across 65 separate categories of data, and it says five years of historical, should really say seven years. So we've got an awful lot of data that you'll be able to access for your project in Dr. Mala's class this term. And one of the things we hope to do is to kind of dive in, discuss how you're going to use the data. I know Dr. Mala wants to focus on leagues, but you can also focus on teams. Excuse me. So... You know, but what I, the question I always like to ask is, are you data driven? Because telling a story with insights and data will bring this assignment and really everything you do in sports to life. Look, I have to tell you, if, you, if you're listening to me right now and you're saying, God, Neil is really excited, it brings a lot of energy. I love the sports business. I love it. There's just no other way for me to say it. I love all aspects of it. And frankly, 
if you love it, <clears throat> then you'll love using data to help bring stories to life. But I will tell you that if you can't love the sports business, if you can't enjoy it, if you can't have fun, <clears throat> then maybe the sports business isn't for you, but it is for me. And I love the data side of it. So I like to ask at the top of the story, are you data driven? Before I get into the, I want to show you, here's how you access our data. So you access our data by going to the library website, as you can see the link here on the presentation, and just typing in sports market analytics or SBR net. That will bring you right to our site. Very easy to get to, no username, no passwords, no nothing. Just get on it and start going. By the way, the site is over on the right-hand side, and we're going to use it and talk about it in a couple minutes. But before I get into it, a data-driven approach has the ability to inspire. By the way, it's also going to inspire Dr. Molly to give you an A, and that's what we really want to get out of this. It allows you to focus on what's important. It allows you to separate what's good from what's not good. It allows you to see the market and the bigger picture of what's going on. We're going to use the NFL a little bit as an example. Right now, we're just about ready to start the NFL playoffs, I guess, on Saturday. Um, unfortunately, my Miami Dolphins are going to have to go to the Kansas City Chiefs, and it's going to, I think, be an ugly day, but it is what it is. But it lets you focus on changing market conditions. It lets you focus on changing situations. It allows you to focus on teams. It allows you to focus on fans. It allows you to focus on competition. I have, I have this little thing that I call Neil's seven steps to building a great story. But the seven steps always start with what you see up on the screen right now. It starts with who. Who's my target market? Who do I want to talk to? What? What it is I want to talk to them about. What it is we're talking about. When? You know, we're going to look at data over trends over a series of time. Where? You know, if we're looking at things like licensed merchandise, where are they buying their merch? Are they buying it at the stadium? Are they buying it online at Amazon? Or are they buying it on fanatics.com? Me, I'm more of an Amazon and fanatics guy. But you may not be. Why? I will tell you why is one of the toughest questions to answer. Because why means you've got to get into people's psyche and you've got to get into the reasoning and understanding. You know, why are they a fan, let's say, of, you know, in this case, we're going to probably talk about the Dallas Cowboys. And in my, in my world, they're the hated Dallas Cowboys. Go Cowboys. Woo. Oh, boy. Are you kidding me? I, it's in my DNA, Dr. Mala. I grew up a Philadelphia Eagles fan. I think one of the first things my father taught me, you know, when I was uh, able to understand sports was, one, hate the Cowboys. Two, hate the New York Giants. Three, hate the Washington Redskins. And that was really where it all kind of started right uh, that's there. Right. That's right. I, I unfortunately grew up a Cowboys fan in New England. So I was in, born and raised in ah. Connecticut and somehow became a Cowboys fan. So anyways, I saw, I had the glory years, but suffered through these past 25 years. Well, this year's pretty good. I think yeah, Dak, we'll Dak may have the guys playing really yeah. well. And I think that they're going to, they may go far in the playoffs. You know, it, it's hard to say what, who shows up on any given sure. day. For but sure. the last question we want to ask is the thing about how. You know, how are fans interacting? Are they interacting via TV, traditional TV? Are they interacting via streaming? Are they interacting via social media? So we're going to get into the how. But it's always about understanding the issues, the challenges. We're going to talk a little bit about choosing the data and getting it from SBRnet. We're going to look a little bit about organizing. You know, we're not going to get too much on the data cleaning and all that because, you know, I, look, I don't expect you to be a data scientist, frankly. I'm not a data scientist. You know, we may create like a little easy visualization, we'll generate insights, and we'll tell a story. So what I'm going to do now is I am actually going to minimize the PowerPoint, and I'm going to focus on my site for a bit. So as you know, you go to the site via your library. Dr. Mala, is the site still up on the screen okay? Yes, still see Excellent, it. Yeah. excellent, excellent, excellent. So this is the site. It's called SBRnet. 
Sports Business Research. We also call it, by the way, Sports Market Analytics. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and it says it right there. You know, we're known by both. But I'm going to talk a little bit about, first, about data and, and things, and where do I start? Where do I go? What do I do? Since I already mentioned the Dallas Cowboys and the NFL playoffs, let's talk about that a little bit. So when you get to my site, it'll say, welcome Mary Harden Baylor. If it says that, you know that you're in the right place. So when you get to the site, I always tell people to start right up here in the upper right-hand corner in what we like to call super search. In this case, I'm just going to type in the words NFL. Look, you can make your search like in Google as broad or as general as you want. Me? I like to start broadly, and then I like to start a little bit, go down to a little bit more narrow. But in the left-hand side, what we have is literally our analysts each day, and we're actually a couple days behind, I see. Each day, we are looking through all of the various sports-related publications, all the related email, um, email journal, all the related sports journals, you name it. And what we're doing is we are bringing these articles to you to make your life easier. My goal is to make your life easier by putting everything in one place. So here, the first article is about Bill Belichick. I don't know if you, you know, are into football that much, but Bill's been, you know, probably the winningest coach, you know, obviously in NFL history, um, except for, I guess, well, I forgot about Don Shula. But, you know, again, important articles about what's going on. Oh, God, another Cowboys thing. But um, so, again, look, he's smiling. Look at Dr. Model smiling over there. So again, we have the ability to be able to start you off by understanding what are some of the basics. Here's an interesting one. In Stadium DB, it seems as though the Carolina Panther, I'm sorry, Tennessee Titans, have been able to secure a new um, licensing deal for their stadium. So again, aside from the advertising, you get you know, articles that help you understand what data you need to be looking at in order to be able to understand, you know, what's going on? You know, what are the topics? What are people talking about? Because that's where you start. But then where do you go? You go to what I call the summary tab. That's the second tab in what we call our super super menu. We've got all these Super names. We love our superlatives here at SBRnet. And look what we get. We go to our single sports summaries, and we go to talking about the NFL. We're going to go right to the NFL. Now, let's talk a little bit about the data. The data you're looking at comes from our 2023 study of sports fans that was done for the year 2022. In fact, Our brand new study is currently in the field and will be available eh, probably around March 15th. So we're looking at data. I don't want to say it's a little old, but we update the data every year. And what you're seeing here is a summary of a number of questions. For instance, the very first question, total number of fans for persons 13 years and older. So we get around 6,500 people a year taking our survey. And the first question we ask them is, you know, what sports are you a fan of? And as you can see, each year, the numbers change. These numbers are represented, by the way, in thousands. Anytime you see a whole number in SBRnet, add three zeros to the end. So this isn't 153,000. This is 153 million. So that means in 2022, the NFL had 153 million fans. I just rounded up a little bit. I mean, rounded, but 153, 186,000. Up from 143 million, 180,000. 
up again from 124 million 413. If you're talking about the NFL, your first observation is they are growing and growing quickly. The NFL has done an amazing job. But then we start looking at things like attendance. You know, what's attendance look like? Well, you know, attendance has kind of suffered a little bit uh, coming out of the pandemic, but it has really started to recover. And we anticipate, by the way, seeing this number grow. In 2020, we did not ask attendance questions. Why? Because nobody was going to games. It was the pandemic. So rather than ask that question and get the data all messed up, I made the decision not to ask that question. But we do look at, for instance, people total viewed at least one game on TV or online. And what do we see? Those numbers have gone up terrifically. In fact, over 149 million, remember, add three zeros to the end, have either watched a game on traditional TV, satellite cable, or streamed it. Peacock, Paramount, NFL Networks, you name it. ESPN, Amazon.com. Oh, God, who else is doing it? Apple TV, is Apple TV streaming NFL? I'm not sure. But as you can see, that number's up dramatically. In fact, what's amazing is that the NFL, you know, really continues to drive a great deal of their fandom from streaming. In fact, if you look right here, percent of TV viewers who streamed at least one game, that number is up to almost 38%. Now, that's a percent. Remember, that says percent here, not whole numbers. Very important as you're looking at data to understand, am I looking at whole numbers or am I looking at percentages? So in fact, when, when, when you do your presentations for Dr. Mala, you might look at, well, it's amazing because the percent of viewers who via been streaming was 37.5% for NFL. It might be interesting to compare it for, I don't know, maybe Major League, maybe Major League Baseball. Or you know what? Let's look at college football just for the hell of it, the heck of it. College football. So look at college football. It's almost the same. 33.7% of all the people that watched, watched via streaming. So streaming has really become an important part, you know, of the, you know, of the process or of the viewing habits. So again, you want to make sure that when you quote the data that you're quoting whole numbers or percentages. We then break the data down by age and age groups and even generation. I will tell you that team sports in general has a Gen Z problem. Your generation, not mine. I'm a I'm a old bad baby boomer. Dr. Mala, I think you're a are you somewhere in that millennial or are you in that um, Gen X category? I am a millennial. Oh, you're millennial. Oh, boy, yeah. don't get me started talking about millennials. <laughs> I have three of them. I'd like to put them all on Millennial Island and somehow send it off, send them off into the middle of the ocean. Hey, I love my kids, but don't get me started. But what's interesting is all team sports, and not just football, by the way, have a problem with Gen Z. The quicker team sports wakes up to this problem, the quicker they're going to be able to fix it. Because frankly, if you look at these numbers, 26.3% of NFL fans are boomers like me, 27 are Gen X, 26.4 are, are millennials. Those numbers are all in line. But look what happens with Gen Z. Only 14.6% or 15% of their fans are Gen Z. I will tell you that is a problem Mr. Scott, that is a definite problem. The number's gone up, but it's still a big problem. And how leagues respond to that is really something that they're going to have to. You know, male versus female, you know, that has changed a little bit over the years. Um, not, not a huge amount. Um, we do break things down ethnically, 
Um, we just started, by the way, to report on that. We did not do it previously. I have the data. I didn't report it. This is the last year was the first year. Household income, um, we're going up this year to 150,000. Actually, went up last year. Um, education, and then some seg- – now, this data right here might be all you need. It just might be all you need. And you can, in fact, get this data and export it all to Excel and start working at it in Excel. So this might be all that you need to work with, but it might not be. And if it doesn't, then here's where you're going to come. You're going to come up here to the premium section. And in our premium section, there are three levels of premium data that you have access to. And by the way, Dr. Mala, I'll make sure you have access to everything. Just because I like you guys. If I ever get down there, I'm definitely coming to to do a presentation in person. Where are you guys located? We're in Belton, Texas. Where is that exactly? One hour north of Austin, 35 minutes south of Waco. Well, I do go to Austin once a year, in uh, usually in uh, early December, late November, for an event. So I, you know, I could be talked into making an hour an hour drive. Absolutely. So welcome anytime. I uh, don't be careful what you wish for. So a couple of things, as you can see, there's an awful lot of data. These these are files are already in Excel. They contain data from all of these categories, literally. But what does the data look like? I'm going to pull up the data now for the NFL because that's what we were looking at. So here's the NFL. Okay. Here we go. Dr. Mahler, are we seeing the Excel spreadsheet on the screen? Yep. Okay. So the data we're looking at right here is comes from our fan study. And as you can see, we always start out by telling the methodology story. You have to know where the data is coming from. If Dr. Mala asks you, hey, when you're doing your presentation, where does this data come from? And you can't answer the question. I'm going to tell him to chop one grade right off of whatever it is you do after that. Because oh, I you. can't tell you how important that one fact is. I have stood up and I've been in tons of meetings. I am always sure that when somebody says, Neil, where does this data come from? I can answer that question. You need to be able to answer it too. Are you going to be that strict, Dr. Mahler, or am I just being a little dramatic here? <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes I, I've heard that I'm the strict one, so I, I'm all for it, Neil. I've also heard that I'm the dramatic one. Uh, my <laughs> wife's been known to call me a drama queen. So, um, you know, what can I tell you? So right here, though, on the second tab, remember I showed you all those all of those areas? Literally, there are 65 or 62 separate tabs about NFL fans. But let's go right to the first one, attended and watched. Hopefully the data is not too small. Remember what I said earlier, all whole numbers are represented in thousands. That is 153 million, not 153,000. Also, that's another thing that irks me. If I find out that some of you are not properly representing the data, that's another grade chopped off. I'm, I'm just teasing. But again, an awful lot of data here on an awful lot of categories. So, I mean, you know, you want to talk about, let's say, I don't know, licensed merchandise. You know, who's buying licensed merch? So let's put it right over. I forgot. There we go. So apparel. So how much are people spending? You know, are NFL fans spending a lot, a little? Are men spending less than women? They're actually, they are spending less than women, actually. Are young people spending more or less? So again, you have the ability to be able to understand what people are buying when it comes to licensed merchandise. Um, you can also look at what they're buying in terms of apparel type. So are they, oh God, that's small. Let's make it bigger. Boy, if Mark were on the call, he'd be yelling at me already. You know, we have 
you know, break it down by T-shirts and jerseys and hats and all that other good stuff. But again, it gives you access to whatever data you need in order to tell a story. And this data is right here in the premium section under fan studies. If you have a question, please, you know, send an email to Dr. Mala. He has my permission to send it over to me. Um, I don't necessarily want to deal with individual students, you know, on small questions and little things, although I don't mind answering questions, to be very honest with you. But if you have a question about a certain topic, I want to make sure that I'm available to be able to help you. But we also have data, interestingly enough, and I'm going to make sure that you have access to this also. Let me go back to the, oops, sorry about that. Oops, that's my trip to Italy, or um, to France. Over here in the premium section, we also have what they call premium team-by-team -team data. And I'll make sure that you do have access. You were supposed to have access, but I'll make sure. And not only do we have the data on a league-by-league -league basis, but check this out. I've got it broken down on a team by team basis. So Dr. Mala, if you want to look at the Dallas Cowboys and you want to talk about them and where they are in terms of fans and what their fans are all about, I can tell you, and this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. I'm going to warn me of the 153,186,000 fans, the Dallas Cowboys have 13 million 34,000 fans nationwide. Remember, this is a nationwide study. Those are not just in Texas. Because I don't think Texas, yeah, Texas probably does have more than 13 million people. But who do you think might be the second most popular team in the NFL? Does anybody, I mean, the answer to that question is, I don't even know, it's actually pretty close between the New York Giants, um, the San Francisco 49ers, the Steelers, uh, the Patriots, but none of the other Texas teams come anywhere near the Dallas Cowboys at 13,205,000 fans. Dr. Mal, you know, do you remember back when they used to call them America's team? I, I, I don't like how you used used to. <laughs> still are. <laughs> well, I hate to say it. They used to, uh, they used to be America's team. What's interesting is also... Dallas Cowboys fans make up about 6.1% of um, all NFL fans. It's, it's an incredible number. I'm not going to kid you. It just is. And, you know, and then here we get the percentages vertically. So, for instance, let's say you wanted to look at the people that watched at least one or two games. So the Dallas Cowboys have – make sure I'm getting the right thing here. 2.35 million – 2,357,000 fans that watch one to two games a year, and that's 17.8% of all Cowboys fans. So you can see how that stacks up against other teams. What's interesting is that the Jacksonville Jaguars, one of the worst teams in the NFL, they've got decent, decent um, you know, game uh, attendance percentage numbers, but they're... Um, well, actually, I shouldn't say decent because they're really not. They've got a high level of people that watch them on TV because they don't want to come out and watch them in person. So, But again, here is where you're able to drill down into the data. Talk about individual teams. This is the same exact data that we looked at here when we looked at on a league-by-league -league basis. So again, we give you a lot of different ways to look at the data. I'm going to go right back to where I was before. Hang on for a second. Tended or watched. So again, you can always take the data and go down to the team level. What's also interesting, I'm going to show you, this is something that's kind of fun. Dr. Mala, you may want to include this. One of the things I love to talk about are what they call ML uh, cross fandom. 
So what teams are NFL fans of mostly? I mean, look, the Yankees always come up. The Yankees are like the Dallas Cowboys of uh, Major League Baseball, as much as it hurts me to say that, too, because I'm, I'm as much of a Yankee fan as I am a Dallas Cowboy fan. But again, you can really look at it in a cross fandom, but you can also do it on a team-by-team basis. Let's take a look and see which Major League Baseball teams the Dallas Cowboy fans are most likely to be fans of. Uh, It's probably going to be the Texas Rangers, I would think, unless I'm wrong. Let's see here. Here we go. No, actually. So let's see. Dallas Cowboys, Yankees. So it looks like I'm doing a quick scan over. Well, it looks like the Dallas Cowboys, let's see, Texas Rangers are way over here. So let's see, see, one point, let's see, 1.53 million Yankee fans, Texas Rangers. Where are we? Texas, Tennessee, Washington Commanders. Oh, wait, I went the other way. Texas Rangers. I thought we were in alphabetical order here. Remind me to fix this. Texas Rangers. Almost as many Ranger fans. Actually, there are literally the exact same number, almost the exact 1.3 million Yankee fans, 1.1 million Texas Ranger fans. It's pretty close. So again, you have the ability to look at cross fandom. Ranger, I mean, you know, Dallas Cowboy fans are also fans of what baseball teams? So again, You know, what we like to do is we like to be able to give you data across a wide variety of categories, and I'm taking you back to my site now, because what I'd like to show you are a couple of other things that might interest you. We have something here called the Resource Center. Now, if you're serious about a job in sports, then you might want to check out our list of podcasts, by the way, including mine, called My First Job in Sports. But here... We have a curated list of podcasts that was done by my analyst team on a wide variety of different topics. Pick out one. Don't try to, oh, I'm going to listen to 10. Don't do that. Pick out one that you think you would enjoy, you know, based on a topic. Now, look, there's a lot of gambling, a lot of gambling stuff, but there's also a lot of non-gambling stuff. And of course, you'll listen. And if you're a Taylor Swift fan, you'll be listening to the Travis Kelsey, Jason Kelsey podcast. I forgot what it's called already. I got to get that one added to the list, though. Um, as I told you a little bit, we have a show called My First Job in Sports. You can listen to it in a traditional podcast, or you can watch it um, as a webcast. Um, we interview. Uh, re- recently graduated students or people that are like, let's say in their second or third job, first job, about what it took for them to get a job in sports. We've got a thing called top people to follow on social media. Check this out. So you know what? You can't follow everybody. But you know what? Pick a few people from the list. Follow them on Insta, on LinkedIn. I don't know what Twitter is anymore. So, you know. I don't, I, I'm, I'm not going to endorse that one. But again, follow somebody. Then the other thing is, when you're ready to start getting a job, when you're ready to go look for an internship, you can literally select any team that you want, any name that you want, and literally go after and understand who are the executives. Let's go if I can find somebody from Austin. Well, this is Austin FC, so it'd be... Uh, it would be soccer, but here it gives you the name of the marketing person, the communications person for Austin FC in the MLS. Well, if you want to, you know, you want to work in soccer or football, depending on how you call it, here is a great directory for you to use to help you get that all important first job in sports or internship. I again, Dr. Mala, I want to thank you very much for inviting me in to speak to the class. Um, Hopefully, uh, you know, 40 minutes wasn't too long, but I think we've been able to cover a wide variety of subjects and a wide variety of things that they'll be students will be able to use.
You're muted, Dr. Mala. There you go. Yeah, all right. Thanks so much, Neil. Appreciate this uh, overview and uh, to see the importance of of data. Um, really, really awesome. And and looking forward to seeing how my students dive into your data. Give, uh, I guess, if I could ask one piece of advice for my students, um, you know, like we in our previous conversation, you had mentioned uh, this is a lot of data, right? And it, and it, it is overwhelming because there's a lot. Um, so what what is one piece of advice you can give to the students as they develop their marketing plans? Because literally you can go in any okay. direction that you want, right? <laughs> so yeah. what what advice would be, uh, would you have to uh, explore your data and to try to hone in and make these data-driven decisions? I, I'm going to give you the same advice I, I use try to use myself. And that is first to use my who, what, when, where, why proposition, but also make sure that you focus in on just one topic, maybe two, and just grab one or two sets of data points. Do not try to dive into this whole pool of data. It will make you absolutely crazy because it can. Just pick one or two data points. Oh, I'm going to focus on attendance. That's it. I'm going to focus on streaming. That's it. I'm going to focus on TikTok. That's it. I'm going to focus on, you know, TikTok versus Instagram because I love Instagram. That's it. So don't try to overdo it. Don't try to be, you know, outsmart yourself. Don't overthink it. Pick one or two points that you need. Work with those one or two points. Generate your insights from that. Then generate your story from those insights. Just pick one or two data points. I, I, I can't, I, I do the same thing. Yeah, I appreciate that uh, very much because uh, it takes quality data to tell a good story, but you can have quality, quality data and have a crummy story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you want to be able to, to be able to maximize and make sure that you're, you're telling a, a strong story based upon the strong data that you have available here. So. You know, the other thing is use the tools that are available to you. I'm guessing you all know how to use Excel in one form or another. You can literally highlight the data you want to talk about and Excel will make the chart or graph for you. Don't try to overthink it. I, I tell students this all the time. They all want to overthink it. Don't overthink it. Now, what I'll typically do is I'll cut and paste the data that I want out of you know, right out of the Excel sheets. I'll put it onto a fresh Excel sheet. I'll make sure that it's kind of lined up the way I want and everything is the way I want it. And then I'll highlight it and I'll just go make chart and Excel does the work for me. I mean, you know, an example, I did something recently, um, you know, about, as we know, you know, yesterday, yesterday they played the national championship game. And um, I'm putting this up on the screen. Can you see it, Dr. Mala? I see. Can you it. see the uh, uh, the sheet that's up on the screen right now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So literally, I asked one of my analysts because you know I was curious to see who who's going to have the most fans at the national championship game they played in Houston last night. So I had him prepare. Whose fans travel better? What did we look at? One question. One question. Do you travel to support your favorite college or pro teams? The collegiate average, University of Michigan, University of Washington. Clearly, Michigan fans are, you know, and you know what? If you listen or watch the game, clearly it was a Michigan crowd last night. Clearly. You know, I said, how do they travel? Are they different? Well, what's interesting is that Michigan fans tr prefer traditional hotel motel, while Washington fans... <laughs> They tend to like to stay at their friends or family's homes. You know, they travel differently. Again, one data point, two data points. Here's my third data point. Now, this one I did a little differently, but what brands, if they stay in a hotel, do they prefer? Hilton, Marriott, or some of the others? Now, I probably shouldn't have shown all those different brands. And in retrospect, I won't next time. But again, I picked three data points. I cut and pasted all of this data into an Excel spreadsheet and Excel did all this work for me, literally. 
I, all I had to do was add the little source line and I was ready to go. So don't overthink it. That's great. That's really great. Um, yeah. Thank you for this insight. And uh, yeah, this, this is uh, really exciting to see what the students will create with your data. My Dr. Ma, I'm looking forward to uh, getting a full report. Um, you know what? I'm going to ask it also send me the best of the best. I want to see, right. uh, I want to see what it looks like and uh, who, uh, you know, which students rose to the top of the, awesome. of the class. I always yeah. like to see that. No, it'd be great. We have uh, 11 students in our ah, class. I can semester. see all 11. Yeah, and they're, they're grad students, so there's a higher expectation and standard for them. So it'll be Oh, great. you just set the bar pretty high, Dr. Bowman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're rough. Hey, uh, have a I great, know. again, happy new year. Have a great day. And uh, look, hopefully you'll, you know, if you have further questions, please route them through Dr. Mala, and then he'll route them to me. For sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. All right. Okay.